I never forgot Jack Miller. I was 19 years old at Lewis Tannins, the old Tannins that was on 42nd Street. And uh, I walked in there. I'd never seen him before, never heard about him. He was standing in the middle of the public area. And people were all around him. And he was doing his, what's come to be known as the ball and silk routine uh, with the pencil. They were appearing and disappearing. They were right there in front of my eyes. And I went crazy. It was really magic. Jack Miller used to hang out at Tannen's Magic Shop and teach there. He had students. And I would see Jack Miller doing some, some uh, miracles and didn't know about a holdout or what it was. It was just, these were just miracles, just magic. I became a student of Jack Miller's when I was either 15 or 16 years old when I worked for Lou Tannen uh, at 120 West 42nd Street. And it was a great experience. When I came back from, from Europe after the Germans surrendered, that was in the summer of 1945. And I met Jack shortly after that. In the early 1940s, when I worked at Tannins, and uh, in those years, uh, we had a lot of wonderful magicians who would hang around on Saturday afternoons, among them, Jack Miller. I still think it's one of the greatest weapons a magician can have, is a Jack Miller holdout. Hi, my name is Alan Greenberg. Uh, when I was about nine years old, I saw Harry Blackstone Sr. He came to Oklahoma City and I was hooked. I guess that's a story that almost all of you watching this have a similar experience. Uh, when I moved to New York, Jack Miller was still around and uh, I saw him perform at a couple SAM events. I wasn't a member of them, but I bought a ticket, went to see him and I just knocked me out. I immediately bought everything he sold. I think you could buy everything he had for like four or five dollars. Anyway, I'd like to do some of the things that he did that I've tried, tried to adopt so you can do them now. He uh, took the pen, put it away, used his finger just like that, and a ball appeared. He then took the ball, gave it a little toss like that, like that, and the handkerchief was back. Not only is the handkerchief back, but the ball's back. Then he put the handkerchief away, and he was obviously left with just the pen. He took the pen, held it right in front so you could see it, and then he just went like that. You can take an egg out of your pocket, place it in the bag, snap your finger, and the egg is gone. Will you squeeze that bag? Is there any chance there's an egg in there? No, absolutely not. No, of course not. It's gone. That's why it's gone. It's back in my pocket. Now, if you want to reverse the thing, you can do the same thing over again, except exactly opposite. You go like this, and guess what? The egg is back in here. You can take the egg, you put it back in the pocket like that, you snap your finger, it's gone, and the egg is back in your pocket. Now, a better way to get that egg over there is to take the egg and put it under your armpit. And then when you lower the bag, you can lift your arm and drop the egg right in the bag. See? But for heaven's sakes, don't lift the bag up there, when the, <laughs> like that. <laughs> because that would make the egg fall back in your pocket. Now, uh, a good way to get that egg over there is to put it in your sleeve and roll it up to your shoulders. Roll it back over there. Make it come down the arm here. Watch it. There she comes. Up! <laughs> you see that? And there she is. Jack was famous. Uh, for his cut and restored rope, uh, and I'm going to try to do it for you now. Eric, would you do me a favor? Would you cut that rope right in the middle? So now there's no question we have two ropes instead of one, right? But watch. <laughs> 